Hey everybody, hope you guys are doing good today and thanks for tuning in to another segment of Intuitive Angling. Um, today we're going to do another non-bait uh, video. You know, I've been doing a series of bait categories and I promise I'll get back to that tomorrow, but wanted to do one uh, off the wall a little bit today. As after uh, yesterday's video, if you saw it, I talked about today's topic, which is who are the in my opinion anyway, everybody's got different opinions, but who are the top five most influential uh, bass anglers in the history of the sport? And um, I think about this a lot because I'm sort of a, a student of the sport. You know, I follow it a lot. You know, I'm, I'm really big into the history of the sport. I think that's really important. And uh, uh, when I talk about the most influential anglers, um, everybody's got some type of a contribution they've made to the sport that fish professionally. And in this list that I put together, um, I'm talking just about professional anglers. There's a lot of people like, you know, like Ray Scott and some of the industry people that have made big inroads in it. But I'm specifically talking about anglers who have, who have done or achieved things that have sort of taken this sport to a different level or, or increased its visibility and popularity, uh, tremendously and there's a lot of there's a lot of people that have done that to some extent and I hope it don't hurt anybody's feelings out if I left who you think you know should be there off the list but anyway I'm going to go through my top five here and I'm just sort of, I'm going to go through you know five four three two one type of a thing and there's there may be some variations in the placement where they should be but these are sort of like what in my opinion who are the top five starting with number five um Number five, um, the most influential person I think in the sport is Scott Martin. Um, Scott, in my opinion, is one of the most, he, he's probably one of the most underrated marquee anglers in the sport. He's, he's, you know, fished FLW his whole career and everybody knows FLW simply did not, not get the notoriety that Bassmaster had, even though the competition was just as good or even better on FLW for so many years. They just didn't get the competition because FLW simply did not promote their anglers uh, like Bassmaster did. And Scott was an unbelievable standout for many years on the on the FLW Tour. You know, Tour champion, uh, FLW Cup champion, just won. He won a bunch of tournaments. He's super consistent, always in the top five, top, top five, top ten in Angle of the Year. Just his performance was just uh, unbelievable on the Tour. Arguably one of the top FLW tier anglers of all time. But the reason I put Scott on the list was not because of his fishing performance, which is incredible in its own right, but for his social media contributions. Scott Martin is without a doubt the number one, uh, the number one angler <coughs> that we have in the sport today <coughs> as far as social media presence. He has taken it to an art form. You know, he had a television show for many years. I think he still maybe does, but he has a massive YouTube following, huge in social media, and he has really shown the whole industry um, the importance of social media from not only growing the sport, but from a marketing standpoint. Because what has happened is performance in tournaments is not as valuable to companies as social media now. You simply cannot get the number of impressions and retainable impressions from tournament performance, even if you win tournaments, as you can with social media. And Scott Martin is at the top of the list when it comes to social media. Super smart dude, you know, great representative of the sport. Just a great guy, I really like Scott a lot. <coughs> so <coughs> I put Scott at number five. Number four is his dad, Roland Martin. And Roland, like I said, it's, I don't think, you know, Roland has been out of the tour level competition for a long time now. So a lot of the newer generations of anglers, they don't, they maybe have heard of Roland Martin, but they don't know how, what a dominating force Roland Martin was in the sport for so many years. Nine time Bass Angler of the Year, which was incredible. The guys won like, I don't know, 25 or 30 Bassmaster tournaments. Um, his performance has been unbelievable, but Ray's big, con or excuse me, uh, Roland's big contribution to the sport came a lot of it in the 1970s. He was super instrumental in growing, helping growing, grow the Bassmaster Sportsman Society. 
to where it is today. I mean, he he worked with Ray Scott, you know, promoting the organization, you know, did a tremendous amount of, of work behind the scenes that people don't know about. And his performance was was dominating to the point in the 1970s that just bordered on the phenomena. So Roland Martin was really the true, the first true superstar in the sport of professional fishing, and he really helped it out a lot in the early days. So I got Roland at number four. Number three, um, Rick Clunn. Now, you know, Clunn has had an exemplary career uh, in so many different ways. He's been such a mentor, and he's been such a, a role model, and he's been such a, 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 a mysterious figure. He's got a mystique about him that's unmistakable. You know, I've known Rick for many years. I consider him a good friend. We've been friends for many, many years. And uh, so I know him pretty, I know him very well. And Rick's contribution to the sport came, in my opinion, through his four Bassmasters Classic wins from 1976 to 1990. And so he, he, he you know, he won four Classics between that time frame, um, which was phenomenal in its own right. But the thing that put Rick on number three on my list was the fact that his last two classic wins, his 1984 classic win at the Pine Bluff, uh, Pine Bluff at the Arkansas River, and his 1990 win at the James River, both of those wins were, were pro in my opinion, without a doubt, the two most impactful classic wins of history. When he won the 1984 classic, he he won the tournament by like 80 by 25 pounds. He had Bill, you know, former presidents Bill Clinton and George Bush were at the weigh-in when he won that tournament, and that the dominance that he had in that 1984 performance really elevated the entire presence of the classic, and it sort of kicked the sport up a, a notch for just from that one win. And the same was in 1990 uh, when he won the Bassmasters Classic in 1990. Uh, the come the come from behind win he had in that particular tournament was was bordering on the, the surreal you know if you were there i was at that tournament i was i fished that classic and you, unless you were at that classic it's hard to really understand what i'm talking about how surreal but the, the comeback he made that was and the fact that at that time winning four classics was was just was an unbelievable event so anyway i put rick the, the two classics wins he had in, in 84 and 90 were transformative to the sport from a fan, you know, perspective in the industry. So I put Rick at number three. Number two, we got Kevin Van Dam. You know, arguably, you know, the most famous angler of the modern age. And, you know, Kevin, obviously, he earns the right on this list, uh, you know, for so many different reasons. But a couple different reasons I put Van Dam as number two on there. Uh, his performance in the, uh, between the 90s to the, up until, you know, like, six or seven years ago um, was, was just, he was the most dominating presence that professional fishing's ever seen. It, you know, Roland Martin may have been comparable back in the 70s, but the competition simply was not there. The sport wasn't as big, you didn't have as many competitors, you didn't have the competition. Van Dam dominated the sport in the middle of some of the most competitive era the sport has ever seen to a level that nobody can ever uh, imagine. Um, but the, and what happened is that dominance that he had was so incredible, massive. He brought in so much of the outside sports world into our sport. I mean, he's good friends with so many, with lots of famous athletes from different sports across the country. You know, he he's he's super smart. He's articulate. Um, he's aligned himself, and he made this sport. He took it from like just the good old boy bass fishing to a, on the same plane with other professional sports like golf and NASCAR racing, baseball, football, that type of stuff. His performance and his presence on stage was so dominating that he, you know, probably single-handedly elevated the sport up to a national stage more than anyone that I've ever seen out there. Um, and like I said, his, you know, his impact within the industry, you know, his marketing savvy, his his brand, the KVD brand, it's just, it's uh, sort of in a league of its own. But my number one pick, <clears throat> number one angler 
in my opinion, he's had the biggest impact of the sport is Mike Iaconelli. And um, I fished around Mike for years, you know, I fished around him when he fished the top 150 circuit. Um, I fished around him when we were both in the Bass Elite 50 series on the FLW Tour. Um, his, you know, he started at the Federation, worked his way up, won the Bassmasters Classic, became a dominating force in the sport. Um, it seems like with, with Iaconelli, Every time there was a marquee event, a, a big championship event, he was always in the hunt. He, you'd always see him on t television. So his performance is, is incredible, you know, right off the bat. But the biggest impact, and the reason I put Mike at the number one spot on the, on the list, was the fact that um, his presence on camera, his stage presence on camera, controversial to say the least, but it attracted so much attention from so many people that maybe didn't even bass fish. I, I knew so many people that didn't even really fish, but they knew who Mike Iaconelli was from his presence on stage. You know, how animated he is. He's controversial. He's animated. You know, he brings in interest into the sport. It, you know, bass fishing in itself is pretty boring, but when you got Iaconelli up there, you know, screaming about he's got a giant on and, you know, never give up and, <clears throat> excuse me, the fist pumping, <clears throat> everything that he does on there, backed up by performance. It's not like that he was just, this was all hot air. Iconelli could back up this energy and this passion with performance, and that's what made the difference. And he's, Iconelli is one of the most mis misunderstood anglers in, in the world. You know, every, a lot of people mistake his passion and his drive and his energy on camera for being, you know, somebody that he's not. He's one of the most cool, down-to-earth dudes you will ever meet in your life. Super smart, super articulate. He's an entrepreneur. Um, he's just, he's done so much for the sport simply because of his persona on camera that has, uh, you know, brought so many people into the sport, for, you know, for all ages. You know, I don't care if it's you know, you're 10 years old or if you're 90 years old, you know, he attracts a following and an energy into the sport that simply never existed from any angler that we had until Mike Iaconelli came around. And I think just the fact that, you know, bringing that awareness and the attention to the sport the way he did, you know, puts him on the, at the number one, uh, you know, position on my list as the top five in, in, uh, most influential anglers. But anyway, that's my list again. Scott Martin, Roland Martin, Rick Clun, Kevin Van Dam, Mike Iaconelli. Um, I can't think of many other people that have, have done more to the sport as far as kicking it up a notch, exposing it, uh, you know, and, and basically giving it the credit it really deserves. Professional fishing does not get the credit it deserves. It's the most difficult, toughest sport in the world on any level, physically, mentally, emotionally, intellectually, everything across the board super tough only people that know that are the ones that have done it for like as long as i have you know if you've done it you understand that so anyway that's my list thought it would be fun to talk about that hey shoot, shoot me some, put it in the comments you know put drop a comment in the, in this uh uh video let me know what you guys think send me your top five you know i'd be curious to know what everybody thinks about that but Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. You know, if you like this video, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. And we'll be back tomorrow with a new lure category, I promise. See you.